What's up, family? I pray you had an incredible week and welcome back to another installment of Manhood Mondays, our weekly devotionals in which we focus on the spiritual disciplines that will shape us into godly men. Today, I want to talk to you about the discipline of friendship. And I want to do so by asking you a question. And the question is, who is your eight? That's right. Who's your eight? See, when I ask that question, I mean, who are the eight closest people in your life right now? Eight friends that you can write their names down specifically on a piece of paper. You see, when I do that exercise in a room full of brothers, it's very rarely that I will find more than two people who have a list of eight people. And if I'm honest with myself right now, I don't even know if I can write down eight brothers on a sheet of paper that I can say are my closest friends. But the reality is we all need to strive to get there. You see, the reason I ask who is your eight is because that when you die, when you pass away at your funeral, the funeral director will call for pallbearers. And there's gonna be four on one side of your casket and four on the other side of your casket. And I don't know about you, but I don't want some distant third cousin that I've never even met before carrying my casket to my final resting place. But instead, I want men that I've done life with, that I have walked with, prayed with through the ups and downs of life to be able to carry me to my final resting place. And friends, friendship is this biblical concept that we see throughout the scriptures. It's this idea of a relationship based upon mutual agreement and mutual spirituality. And family, the best illustration in the scriptures that we see of friendship takes place in 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 1 through 4. It's this picture of David and Jonathan who have a covenant friendship that is able to withstand dark times. So family, go with me as we look at this great statement of friendship between David and Jonathan. Now it came about when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as himself. Saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, including his sword and his bow and his belt. I believe that this text gives us a biblical baseline for what a great friendship is supposed to look like. And nestled within these four verses are five principles of a godly friendship. First, friendship involves mutuality. You see, mutuality is the idea of two friends seeing life from the same divine perspective. It's not that you agree on every single subject, but it is the idea that you view life through the same biblical worldview and the same spiritual lens. Great friendships have to be founded on this spiritual divine mutuality. Second, what we see in this text is love. Every great friendship has to involve love. Love is this brotherly affection that you have towards your friend. It's the idea of a brotherly affection that is godly, that is selfless, but at the same time, it is patient. And over and over again, within these four verses, we see that David and Jonathan love one another their souls were knit together through mutuality, but they expressed it through practical love and brotherly affection toward one another. And third is commitment. You see, commitment is this idea of sticking with your friendship through difficult times. Commitment to invest in the friendship. And ultimately, as friends, as Christians, people ought to be better off because they know us. And a committed friend is one who is committed to helping the other person look more and more like Jesus Christ. Godly friendships have to involve commitment. Fourth is this idea of loyalty. This is a friendship that sticks together through thick and thin. David and Jonathan made a covenant toward one another, a covenant that no matter the circumstances, they were going to remain loyal to one another. So much so that David handed over his robe, his armor to his friend as a demonstration of loyalty. And listen, friends, if your friendship is going to stand the test of time, 
we have to be aware that we have an enemy that wants to tear apart Christ-centered friendships. But what we must be committed to is being loyal to God and being loyal to our Christ-centered friendship so that the enemy is not able to build a wedge between brothers in Christ. And lastly, friendship has to involve encouragement. There is something special about being able to encourage your brother in Christ along the way. And what encouragement is, this is this godly boost, this spiritual boost that you give your friend in times that are difficult, but also this affirmation during times that are well. And friends, if we are going to stand the test of time with our friendships, we have to make sure that we're committed to encouraging one another, especially in times like these. So those are five principles of what a godly friendship is supposed to look like. Now that we've looked at this biblical baseline uh, as to what it looks like to have a great friendship, let me give you some practical things that I think will help all of us become great friends. First is prayer. This is the idea of asking God to perform an inward change to increase our capacity to be great friends. It's also the idea of us praying for the friends in our lives. First is prayer. Second is friendliness. This is this positive disposition that places ourselves where friendship happens. And I know that it can be difficult during this COVID season of quarantine, but let me just remind you that in places that you're able to go virtually and places that you're able to go physically, make yourself friendly and put yourself in a position to be a godly friend toward other people. Third is work. Friendship takes work. And work is the idea of placing a value on the friendship where you make a consistent commitment to have conversations with this person, uh, to, to meet with this person, but to invest in the friendship. Fourth is affirmation. This is the idea of giving some uh, affirming your friend in the things that they do well. This is the idea of giving some compliments and positive feedback and reinforcement along the way. We need each other, brothers, and we need to hear some positivity reflected in our friendships toward one another. And then fifth is this idea of listening. We have to listen to one another. We must seek to understand before we seek to, uh, to be understood. Listening is the idea of hearing your brother out so that you can figure out ways to pray for that brother, to support that brother, and to help that brother out. Six is acceptance. Acceptance. This isn't the idea of agreeing with everything that this person has to say, nor is it the idea of co-signing someone's foolishness. But this is the idea of being able uh, to accept and understand the things that are different about your friend. Personality, skill set, we need to be able to have unity in the midst of diversity and accept the differences of our friends. And then lastly, is hospitality. This biblical word literally means to be nice to the stranger. It's this idea of being hospitable, is being able to welcome and accept your brother in Christ, even in the midst of a difficult situation. So those are seven components that I believe will help make us great friends in this season. Well, family, that's it for the discipline of friendship. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. And if it has been, let me invite you to like, comment, and share this devotion with another brother. Well, family, I hope you have an incredible week. And as you go forth this week, seek out ways where you can live out the discipline of friendship and become a better friend to point more people to Jesus Christ. Love you, and I can't wait to see you next week for another installment of Manhood Mondays. God bless.